Hello, this is Federica Bertocchini and we are at the Institute of Biomedicine and Biotechnology of Cantabria in Santander, north of Spain. With my colleague Susanna Chuber Susa Lopez at the Leiden University Medical Center, we have analyzed and reviewed what is known so far on primordial germ cell specification in amniotes. Primordial germ cells, or PGCs, are the precursors of the germ cells, and germ cells are the cells that in the gonads will generate the gametes, that is, sperms and eggs. How are PGCs specified? According to the current view, in the animal kingdom, PGCs can form via two different mechanisms, or maternal specification, also known as predetermination, or induction, also known as epigenesis. Maternal specification is based on the presence of maternally generated determinants, which constitute the so-called germplasm. Germplasm localizes to a certain region of the zygote, and it is physically inherited by the PGCs as the embryo undergoes rounds of cell divisions. Alternatively, PGCs are initially not present in the embryo, but have induced at a certain moment in a specific place by cells adjusting to the site where PGC will form, and this is induction. This duality is a well-accepted concept in biology. What do we actually know of PGC specification in amniotes, that is, mammals, birds and reptiles? This is a simplified phylogenetic tree representing amniotes, mammals on one branch and the sarapsids, reptiles and birds, on the other. Mouse is the only system in which PGC specification by induction has been described in details, while only scarce pieces of information are available for other species, like rabbit, pig, cow or human. This is mostly due to the many genetic tools available in the mouse, and also to the low availability of early embryos in other species. What do we know about the other branch, that is, birds and reptiles? In the current view, chick PGC form via maternal specification, implying the presence of germplasm, while data on turtles suggest that PGC in turtle form via induction. In birds, this view is mostly due to the pattern of expression of key PGC markers, which localize as early as two cell stage. However, what we have noticed instead is a high degree of heterogeneity among germ cell markers during the early developmental stages. So that at early embryonic stages, different cells express different markers. And this heterogeneity is also present in mouse and in human. If we look at reptiles, lack of localization of PGC markers in turtle has been interpreted as a sign of germplasm absence in favor of an induction modality. Although this is plausible, we have to point out the extreme variability of localization of supposed PGC, identified with morphological and cytological criteria, in other representatives of the class, like snakes, the sphenodon, or chameleons like these ones here. In view of the currently available data, it seems that the clear cut between maternal specification and induction is not clear, and the idea of assigning amnot groups to one or the other of the two modalities of PGC specification is blurred. We propose an alternative view in which induction is needed in the formation of PGC, regardless of the presence of germplasm. That is, even when germplasm is present, a further step of induction is needed. In the review, we explain in detail how we envision this scenario. A more extensive analysis on a larger number of species, like the chameleon here, will definitely help clarifying the mode and evolution of PGC formation in amniotes. If you want to know more about it, go ahead and check the paper.